Let's speak to somebody whose art you can see. Nathan Evans is an illustrator and murist who, amongst a great many other things, painted the mural down the side of Leeds Market, Kergate Market, just on the uh, bus station uh, side there. And here he is on the big Yorkshire phone. And hello, Nathan. Hello again, Andrew. Lovely to speak to you again. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Yourself? Yeah, very good, thank you. This is an issue that keeps cropping up, and I think, I mean, I don't particularly want to dwell on this house in East End Park, but this point that one person's street art is another person's graffiti, you must get it all the time. Yeah, I think what what you just said is a key point, not dwelling on this particular instance, because I think uh, this argument usually turns into people debating one individual piece of artwork, and I think it's it's more realistic to focus on the bigger issue which is do do we want to see people young people with talents being able to showcase their creativity in a put in the public realm that's kind of the question we should be asking instead of do we like this particular piece of artwork and quite a lot of what people might traditionally think of as graffiti has been young people historically often in towns and cities making their mark some of them clearly whether you like it or not clearly very talented artists but for some people where they do it how they do it is the thing they've got the problem with yeah that's it i guess we spoke about this a little bit before right and it's 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 whether i guess whether permission is is granted. I mean, in, the, in this instance, the person who owned the house did commission the artwork, so it seems a little strange. And it, it's clearly, I've had a, I've had a quick look at it. As much as I said we shouldn't talk about this individual uh, uh, case, I think I have had a look at it, and the message was living is giving. I believe it's it's like a positive message. It's not kind of derogatory. When I heard I saw an offensive. I, I kind of thought mm, it must be something really bad to kind of provoke that kind of response. But it includes some writing, and as soon as you get writing in it or lettering, sometimes people think, not your lettering, and we'll come on to the what's down the side of Leeds <laughs> Market. I don't think you can see that as, in any sense, graffiti style in the traditional sense. But anything yeah. that creates writing or whatever on the side of a building in a part of a city or a town where there has been historically graffiti, some people just think, well, let's just clean it out. Let's, you know, brush it over. Let's put some brick-coloured paint on the end. Yeah, but the, the truth of that is... Um, the chances are, if these people are successful in having this artwork removed, that um, it'll be uh, buffed out, um, painted over with, uh, as you said, brick-coloured paint. The chances are that it's more likely to be targeted by kind of what they would see as traditional graffiti, the, the more messy, fast, kind of not-considered artwork or graffiti. Um, so the really kind of shooting themselves in the foot here by by removing something that someone's put a, a lot of time and effort into. They're probably just opening it up to be targeted by, uh, I guess, for lack of a better term, tags. Yeah, the irony... Yeah, I mean, just explain what tags are, because um, for people who don't know, it's something probably people will have heard about. What, what do you understand when you say tags, Nathan? Oh, you're opening a can of worms here. <laughs> uh, I can talk about graffiti all day. Um, so I guess there's different kind of different levels and sizes of what you'd call graffiti. It starts with a tag, which is the small kind of quick letter form of writing your name. Then the next step up from that is throw-ups, which uh, are known as throwies, a uh, quick graffiti history lesson for everyone. And that's kind of a more, um, takes a little bit more time, bubble lettering, slightly larger. And then it moves on to pieces, which is like, usually takes a lot longer, lots more colors, um, more kind of uh, intricate letter styles, and then it, it goes it goes up to kind of productions, which is a group of pieces where people have come together and really considered the, the composition. So tags is kind of what what you'd know as your lowest form of graffiti. Understand. And in Leeds at the moment, I'm, I am just focusing on Leeds. This is where the house in question that we uh, has prompted the conversation is. You um, and I'll get you to describe it. Did the lettering, which I said to you before, I really love, and I see it virtually Definitely. every day of my life down the side of Leeds Market. There's a, uh, a Leeds United one at the moment. Some artists, uh, very very good artists, I think, have spent a considerable amount of time. I don't think anyone would describe it as yeah. graffiti, but putting public art on the side of a uh, big building, which is on the top of Leeds railway station. So what we are seeing is public art in that sense in a way that I don't think we would certainly have been seeing 15 years ago. 
Yeah, it's definitely come a long way. You say 15 years, maybe even maybe even five years. Really interesting, in, yeah. Especially in like a, spe- a specific case of Leeds. I definitely think it's been in the last few years where it's, it's really started picking up. Um, I mean, I spoke about it a little before, East Street Arts uh, running a project called The City Less Square, um, where they commission artists to produce kind of large-scale murals as well as some smaller stuff as well, but um, definitely large stuff. So tell us and about then, what you've done at, at Leeds Market for people who haven't seen uh, it or may have seen it, and then they think, oh, hang on, that's what he's talking about. Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, so, yeah, it was 2016, January, a rainy January in 2016 when I painted the kind of four, three or four, I can't remember, it was a while ago, uh, exterior walls of the outdoor market, and it was just a piece that... Um, read hello and welcome to Leeds um, and yeah just predominantly lettering which is what I kind of specialise in but uh, a very kind of more graphical and ty- typographical and a lot more accessible to people outside of the, the kind of niche niche circle of graffiti. And very colourful, very upbeat I think and you wouldn't look at it and say that has been accidentally put up by somebody in the space of 10 minutes would you? Well, well, I I wouldn't, but it, it's surprising how um, how sometimes people don't grasp uh, the amount of time that a certain piece would take. Um, some people do kind of struggle to to uh, figure out whether someone someone did something illegally or was like commissioned and given time. Because I mean, it's, some of these things can take uh, a long a long time to kind of pen and. Logistically, it's, it's a real project management role that you take on as an artist when you take on these kind of things. I described you finally, Nathan, as an illustrator and muralist. Tell me what, what that means then and why you like to be introduced as that. Yeah, OK, so illustrator because I kind of... I'm, I'm not limited to uh, creating work for walls. A lot, a lot of my commissioned work is for uh, kind of client-based work that is for print or for digital uh, so I do kind of hand drawn stuff as well as painted stuff and then muralist um, it's, it's just kind of I think it's a little bit more established as a as a word for it's a little bit uh, how it's a little bit more accepted as someone who paints walls although in, in recent years I think uh, street artists and kind of graffiti artists they're, they're quite good if you want to market yourself as that well, interesting. And how did you start? Did you start uh, doing stuff sort of small scale, big scale? What 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 was your beginning in a in a formal sense, Nathan? Yeah. Um, so I think everyone starts with drawing, right? It, usually that's that's the way things develop. And for me, it was uh, at an early age a lot of drawing, and then kind of drawing a lot of lettering. And then it was um, someone else who actually said to me. Are you ever thinking about kind of painting these? And at the time before that, I hadn't considered painting at all. Um, so that person who asked that really opened up a whole new world. Just brilliant. I... One of my best friends is a very, very good artist, and he can't stop. He's, he's you know, we're, we're, I'm going away with him weekend after next, and he has yeah. a sketchbook all the time. He's always drawing. He's he's just brilliant, and I love I love that creativity. And I really good to speak to you again, Nathan. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's been brilliant, Andrew. Have Thanks very day. much indeed. Same to you. All the best, Nathan Evans, illustrator and muralist, who amongst a great many other things painted the uh, mural uh, on those walls round Leeds Market.